Hey YouTube, The Comic Chief here. Today we will be reviewing Uncanny X-Men number 620. I'll be honest here, it's been well over a decade since I pulled an X-Men title consistently. Whosoever watches this channel, if he or she be worthy, shall acquire the knowledge from The Comic Chief. And stuck to it. So after these first 10 issues, we will see if I'm gonna keep going. This issue is titled Disassembled Part 1 and is written by Ed Brisson, Matthew Rosenberg, and Kelly Thompson. The art was beautifully drawn by Mahmoud Azrar and the original cover was done by Len Nil, Yu, and Edgar Delgado. I ended up getting the variant done by Scott Williams and Ryan Kinnaird. Out of all the covers, I found this one to be my favorite because, well, Bishop's always been my favorite since the Messiah, Messiah Complex, and with Nightcrawler at the center, I thought it was pretty cool. Plus, I've been pulling X23, so. So I'm assuming the title is uh, disassembled because they are merging all the different X-Men teams from the red, blue, gold, and astonishing series to uncanny back to its true form. So quick wreck of my review. The art was okay. It wasn't anything to wow me, but I dig it. I'm not familiar with the artist, just not uh, used to seeing X-Men drawn like this. So it's a win, I guess. Uh, the writing was okay as well. Lots of dialogue to follow through. And I know it's a really, really big ensemble with multiple X-Men teams having their own storylines, but it was just the end of me. So, uh, Point five stars. The plot was well, okay, this is a coming together story and I love that Jamie seems to be the center of this whole thing, but the whole mutant rights thing, suppressing the gene thing seems redundant already and this is issue number one. One of a new saga. Let's see where it goes, but for now I have reservations, so half star. Yikes, the character development. Hmm. Well, everyone getting their feet wet, lots of new X-Men in me, but if one were to assume that they've never read an X title in their life, too many characters to juggle. I, I like that they titled the bad guys with names next to their faces the, from the first time seeing them. They should have done that with all the X-Men. So no, the price tag at $7.99, the book is pretty jam packed. The only saving grace are the side stories included at the end, but the book just didn't seem spectacular for a premiere issue. So I'm gonna have to go with no. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I give this two and a half stars out of five. So the issue begins with Jamie Madrix, AKA Multiple Man in the Dark, uh, asking Jean Grey where Kitty Pride is. Then he's killed by X-23. As we come to our first two page spread, we find that the X-Men in an all out war against many multiple men, which by the way, multiple men's five part miniseries that just came out is pretty sweet. So the thing is about these multiple men is they were all asking where Kitty was and it was weird because all their minds were factored. We cut to the Xavier Institute and Jean Grey asks where is Kitty Pride? Iceman, Beast, and x 3 are having breakfast and Nightcrawler teleports in. It appears that the battle we just saw was just the vision Jean Greenway was having because it was a premonition, maybe? So there are various X-Men teams in this inaugural issue, so forgive me if I'm not exactly sure who's who. Yet, it's a number one. So, we're in North Carolina, a group of young X-Men are flying in the Blackbird, Kitty Pride is leading the team to go uh, fight a forearm villain as the team jokes about the villain's name and they are about to make a landing, they lose power and they are headed for a crash. Before the jet makes its crash landing, Kitty convinces Pixie to teleport the team to safety. Where? We don't know because we cut to Storm and Beast in the African desert taking water samples. They are in a desert that has begun to experience heavy rainfall, more rain than it has received in the past 10 years and uh, just in a few hours. We cut back to Pride's team. So far I know it's uh, Pixie, Oya, oh yeah, Kitty Pride, I don't know. The wreckage uh, of the blackbirds behind them, so they didn't go far. Uh, villains come in, and finally we get some action. The X-Men and villains start to scuffle, and we learn that the bad guys are just trying to stop a vaccine from being disturbed, which would stop the X-Gene from manifesting in uh, kids. So are they the bad guys? Uh, multiple man shows up to ask the X-Men where Kitty was. At that point, we find out that she vanished. As the battle continues, more X-Men show up. Nightcrawler rescues the injured. Polaris and X-23 finish the fight quickly. We cut to Manhattan City Hall. Senator Ashton Allen is speaking in regard to something we've seen already time and time again, arguing that mutants are weapons of mass destruction and arguing in favor of the vaccine. Among the crowd are Archangel, Jubilee, Bishop, and Psylocke. Uh, as they begin talking about the repercussions, Jean Paul and, of Alpha Flight and Jean Grey and Iceman are also there. And Jean is starting to worry about not being able to reach Kitty because she is due to speak after the Senator. Then they look up to the podium and see Jamie Maddox speaking in her place. We immediately cut to the Xavier Institute for Education and Outreach in Central Park, where Beast is tending to the battle-injured X-Men uh, Nightcrawler that brought to the him. Uh, first off, I have to say, I don't know if I really like the art in this issue. I'm not used to the X-Men being drawn like this, and I hate the way Beast looks. 
As Beast is tending to his patients, they turn to the television where Jamie's speaking at City Hall. We cut back to City Hall, and when the X-Men worry that Jamie will do something drastic, Jean tries to reach his mind but can't, and the other X-Men are tending to multiple men in the crowd, causing chaos. Immediately, the X-Men try to contain the situation by shutting down multiple men and saving innocent bystanders. Jamie's target seems to be the senator, and as they bum rush him and tackle him, the X-Men push for one last rescue attempt. Jean Grey puts an end to the chaos, and as she reaches for the senator, the senator vanishes. Jamie says they were too late and that they couldn't stop it. The plot thickens. Psylocke goes to punch him in the face, and he and all his clones vanish as well. Jean is thrown in the media spotlight, and the X-Men are blamed for the chaos. We cut to elsewhere, where Kitty Pride and the Senator are tied to chairs. Kitty is powerless, and the Senator blames the X-Men for his kidnapping. A voice interrupts them, and on the final page we see Apocalypse, and he's also captured and strapped to Huge X. We are greeted with the words, to be continued. Okay, there's a three-part uh, story plus epilogue also here at the end, which I'm not going to review, but we'll say I like them better than the main story. And uh, they are standalone stories of the days prior to this issue from Bishop, Jean Grey, Armour, and Anul, and an epilogue. Uh, so yeah, that's all I got, YouTube. It was a pretty long issue, but not for $7.99. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend, you know, buying it. Uh, but yeah, um, check it out. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you've already read it. Uh, what do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? This is Comic Chief going offline.